morning everybody welcome to day 22 of vlogmas thank y'all so much for stopping by to all of my new subscribers welcome to all of my returning subscribers thank you for coming back so before we get started if you have not already hit that red button below go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel so you do not miss another video so today's video i'm going to just briefly tell you about my experience going to the NACA home buyer workshop. So um, me and my husband were NACA qualified on November 7th of 2019. I'm sorry, November 5th of 2019. And we attended the NACA workshop, home buyer workshop on November the 7th of 2019. So two days after we were NACA qualified, we attended the home buyer workshop. So at the Home Buyer Workshop, they give you this white book, which is the Purchase Workbook. And in that Purchase Workbook, it goes over everything you need to know. I mean, it goes over maintaining your NACA qualification, NACA mortgage, the interest rate buy down. Um, it goes over purchase eligibility, mortgage amount calculation, 30 year mortgage amount calculation, NACA's real estate department, types of real estate agents, housing search preparations, grants and nonprofit funds, property types, construction types, property specific, le specific letter, purchase and sale contract, NACA's hand department, NACA's repair list, um, NACA credit access and bank application, how much money you will need to buy a home. It goes over everything. So they give you this book once you get to the NACA workshop, home buyer workshop. Then they also give you your NACA qualification letter. So it's like a five page packet and this is the packet that they gave us and it tells you what your monthly mortgage payment is it tells you what your monthly tax amount is it tells you what your interest rate is what your maximum mortgage amount is um it tells you the date you were NACA qualified and we were actually qualified on november the 4th i said the 5th but it says NACA qualification date november the 4th um yeah, and it tells you all of your financial information and how they came about with the amount of your mortgage payment, your taxes, all of that. Um, it tells you what your monthly payment shock is. For ours, our monthly payment shock was only $184. And with the monthly payment shock, if you don't know, with the monthly payment shock, you want to continue to save at least this payment shock every month through closing which must be reflected in your bank accounts or other accounts. So basically, me and my husband, we were saving over $184 a month. We would, I'm not gonna say how much we were depositing into our accounts, but every time we got paid, we deposited a certain amount into our savings, which was well over $184. Because we just felt like $184 a month is, a little bit for us we knew that we could afford to save more so that's what we did if you can afford to save more than what your monthly payment shock is then save more because it's only going to benefit you in the long run um it tells you what your minimum required funds are our minimum required funds was three thousand one hundred and eighty four dollars we already had that in our savings i mean we were just saving and saving so we weren't worried about not having the minimum required funds because we already had that in our savings so basically when they tell you what your minimum required funds are they want you to maintain at least this amount and more for a multi-family in your bank account throughout closing and this includes funds to buy down your interest rate so we didn't have to worry about that because we didn't use any of our savings to buy down our interest rate because the seller gave us $4,000 to allow us to buy down our interest rate. Um, I do want to share with you that our, our interest rate prior to buying it down was with a 30-year mortgage, 
was 3.375%, and that was at that current time on November the 4th. You know, the interest rates fluctuate every day, but on that specific day, November the 4th, our interest rate was 3.375% before we used the funds to buy our interest rate down. Um, and we were also considered a non-priority member. I will make a separate video about that in another at another time because that is like a whole different game changer for people. I know it was a game changer for us because y'all, we're not gonna get into that in this video. Um, but yes, so it goes through everything in your NACA qualification handout. Like I said, it's like a five page document. It tells you about the 15 year wealth builder mortgage, interest rate file down, housing search, um, and what else? It gives you the contact information for the NACA recommended home inspectors. That'll be a separate video as well. My home inspector was great. I found him through my real estate agent and he was awesome, very nice. He even asked me questions about my experience going through NACA and you know, he was amazed. So, cause he deals with a lot of NACA clients because it's, the real estate agent deals with a lot of NACA uh, clients. But the workshop lasted about two hours, two and a half hours at the most. It is a real estate agent who's conducting the NACA home buyer workshop. Um, I believe it was about 15 of us attended the workshop and you get to ask as many questions as you'd like. They have a PowerPoint that is up and they're going over the PowerPoint with you. They also have um, other NACA in-house realtors there to talk with you one-on-one, face-to-face after the home buyer workshop is over with. Just so if you have not found a real estate agent, there are agents there who you can talk to to try to get to know, just to kind of uh, talk to them, just to see if they are somebody who you might want to work with. But anyway, um, I met her two times and then I met her the day that my husband and I came in to sign our bank application. Um, she came in and she asked us, what were we considered, priority or non-priority? And I didn't know. And that's when our NACA counselor told her that we were non-priority members. And she was like, hmm. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, what? why did she do that? And I guess that just meant that she could, she didn't have so many restrictions on the amount that we could afford. I guess she did that because she knew that with the amount that we were approved for, there were so many more options. And not to say anything is wrong with being approved for a lower amount for a home because you can find a great fixer upper. Sometimes my husband and I even talked about maybe we should have found a fixer upper and you know got the money and made the renovations to the home but then we did not really want to do all of that we wanted to just go new construction all the way but if you do go that route then more power to you i mean it would be a very nice journey to be able to see the home from the beginning to the end after you made all the repairs i watch them all the time on hgtv and it is amazing how these homes turn out after you have fixed them up. I even watched this girl on YouTube. She goes by the name of April B. She bought a fixer upper and y'all, I'm watching her journey right now. It's already done, but she documented the entire process. And I'm watching it and I'm like, oh my God, every Monday she uploads a video. And I just love to see how she went from this home that she bought as a fixer upper and to how it looks now, she completely transformed that home. So the NACA home buying workshop was great. I recorded the entire session because my husband could not attend. It was a voice recording, so that's what I did. So if I could not relay some of the information to him, he could have listened to it. But it was an amazing feeling. I talked with some other people there and just, you know, share some ideas and things, you know, share some of my experience with them. And it was an amazing feeling because just being able to go to the home buying workshop just allowed me to know that we are just one step closer to finding our home, our dream home. And it was just 
it, it was just an awesome feeling. So as soon as I left that home buying workshop, I went home. Me and my husband started looking for homes. We were up to probably 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning looking for homes because we were so excited and we finally knew what we could afford. So we did not try to go over the amount that we could afford when we initially started looking. We typed in homes and we put the price range. So all of the homes that came up were within our price range and our budget. But what we failed to realize was when you're a non-priority member, you can't move everywhere you want to move. So, but it was an amazing feeling and I just wish that you know, I could do it all over again sometimes, just going through that process. But yes, so whenever you get to that point, you will understand what I'm saying because until you get to that point, you won't really know. But um, I know for some of you, you guys have just started. And for some of you, you may be going through this process right now. So if you are going through this process, take your time, do not rush. Um, you know, we were on a month to month lease because we were not going to renew our lease for another year. Um, and we were only doing a month to month for, I think three months because our lease ended on February the 1st of 2020. And so we closed April 13th. And so we only did, no, we only did two months. So we did a prorated, a, a prorated month for month to month for February. We did a full month for March and a prorated amount for April. So it was like basically a full two months. But um, yeah, it is an amazing feeling. And the handbook that they give you at the workshop, like I said, has everything you need to know. If you still have questions after you have read the entire booklet, email your NACA counselor, email your NACA in-house realtor. They will be able to answer any questions you have. Um, my real estate agent, like I said, was great when it came to her responding to us. She just was on top of it, y'all, all the time. And she was also on time to all of her showings with my husband and I. She was never late, she was always on time. And if she was late, she would let us know. She would have the itinerary down, I mean, she would email, she would text me like, okay, we're going to this house at 1.30, we're going to this house at 2.45, this house at 3.30. She just had everything down packed. So, um, yeah, it was just, it was such a great feeling, y'all. So I can't wait for you guys to get to that point. Um, in the comments below, let me know where you are in your NACA journey. If you are just starting, let me know. If you have been NACA qualified, let me know when you were NACA qualified. If you have attended the NACA, if you have attended the NACA Home Buyer Workshop, let me know. Let me know how they're doing them now. Are they webinar or are they allowing you to come into the office but social distancing? Let me know because it's so different now than what I went through because we weren't going through COVID last year in 2019 around November. So let me know if you are in the home search process, let me know how that's going for you. Did you get frustrated? Where did it, was it a, a, a walk in the park for you? Let me know. I wanna know how your journey is going right now with NACA. So that is about it for this video um, in regards to my NACA qualification and attended the home buyer workshop. So I hope that you guys enjoyed Vlogmas Day 22. And if you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you guys tomorrow in day 23 of Vlogmas. Bye.